Hello, today we are going to continue our subjects in this course and today we will explain capital asset pricing model. Last lecture we explained portfolio. If the investor will invest more than one asset to reduce the risk, that's called as diversification. Today we will continue how we can to reduce the risk by portfolio then how we can to determine the expected rate of return our topic today capital asset pricing model we need to understand in this class capital market theory the capital asset pricing model and main assumption for KABM so how we can to measure the risk for systematic risk that measured by beta in beginning what KABM that model help us to determine the expected rate of return for risky assets so why only for risky assets in actual there are two types for the assets some assets include risk that means the expected rate of return uncertainty there is risk while other assets there is no risk because there is certainty in the expected rate of return for that main objective for capital asset pricing model to allow you to determine the required rate of return for any risky assets there are many assumptions for capital asset pricing model main assumption the investors according to evident volunteer who want to target any point on evident volunteer last lecture we explained evident volunteer the investor try to get any point include highest rate of return with lower risk and according to KABM the investor can to borrow and lend any amount with level of risk free rate we will explain what the meaning risk free rate that's investment include free risk like treasury bills for that an investor when you he need to invest he will look for more than risk free rate to compensate his investments also according to KABM all investors have same expectations to estimate the probability distribution for the future rate of return moreover all investors have same one period such as six months one year that's mean all the investors have same expectations have same time other assumption for KABM the investors according to KABM can to buy and sell the assets with high volatility in the prices for that we can say main objective for KABM to determine the expected rate of return for risky assets more assumption for KABM no tax assume there is no tax when we need to calculate the expected rate of return for risky assets we assume there is no tax there is no any change in inflation interest rate that's mean any change in macroeconomic factors also according to KABM capital market are in equilibrium implying that all investment priced with level of risk so according to KABM main vector to understand KABM we need to understand risk-free assets that's concept again related with any investments include free risk like treasury bills 
That's as it include certainty expected rate of return. Main specification for this type of assets, an asset with zero standard deviation because there is no volatility in expected rate of return. For that, the standard deviation will be zero. And zero correlation with all other risky assets. If we need to look for risk-free rate, we will see risk-free rate lie on vertical axis of a portfolio graph. Then the investor will look for more than risk-free rate. That's called as risk premium. An example, if the risk-free rate 10%, the investor will require more than 10%, like 15%. That's 5% include risk premium to compensate the investors for any risk. For that, when we are talking about risk free rate, we are talking about standard deviation will be zero and covariance in this case will be zero because there is no volatility in the expected rate of return. There is no uncertainty in expected rate of return, then the covariance will be zero. Other idea in capital as a surprising model, we need to understand capital market line. Now we understand risk-free rate. The investor will look more than risk-free rate, like risk premium. To understand capital market line, we need to understand the relation holds for every combination of risk-free asset with any collection of risky assets. That means we have some assets with risk-free rate and we have collection of risky assets. In actual, the investor will look for risky assets that includes more expected rate of return. However, when the risky portfolio, that's called as M in any graph, is market portfolio contain all risky assets held anywhere in marketplace, the linear relationship is called as capital market line. In capital market line, we will understand the relationship between expected rate of return and standard deviation. For the risky assets, why risky assets that include uncertainty and expected rate of return? That means there is volatility in expected rate of return. For that, if we need to understand the relationship between expected rate of return and standard deviation, that's called as capital market line. So, in this graph, we will understand we have expected rate of return, we have standard deviation. Look for this graph, the expected rate of return and standard deviation, we have capital market line. Look for this point, we have risk-free rate. For that, the investor, he will look for any expected rate of return more than risk-free rate. In actual, if the investor look for this, that's capital market line include all risky assets in the market. One can attain higher expected return than it's a variable in M point. So the investor maybe will look for any point in evident volunteer. That's the first assumption in capital asset surprising model. Maybe the investor will look for M that distributed with capital market line. Look for this point. So, if the investor need more expected rate of return with increased level of risk, will need will target as E. If the investor need to reduce his investment, that's mean depend on lending, not borrowing, he will target C point C. So, which the better for the investor? In the actual, the answer depends on the investor. Depends on the investor decision. If the investor look for more return, he will look for E point. If the investor need to 
depend on lending and reduce their investment we'll look for c point using capital market line to understand how we can to calculate expected rate of return if we assume you have riskless security 4% and market portfolio with return 9% and standard deviation of 10% how should you go about investing your money so your investment will have risk level 15% so how we can to calculate portfolio return by this equation equal risk free rate plus standard deviation multiply risk premium that's include ri risk market minus risk free rate divided standard deviation and if we will apply this equation we will arrive portfolio return in this case main idea in capital market line we will understand the relationship between expected rate of return and standard deviation so how much the invest in riskless security will be in this case five percent now in other hand we need to understand security market line in capital market line measure the relationship between expected return and standard deviation so in capital market line focus on standard deviation and standard deviation related with uncertainty because there is volatility in expected rate of return now KBM focused on only risky assets that's measured by beta that's measure the volatility in market prices so KBM will help us to what should the expected rate of return for risky assets how we can to determine the expected rate of return for risky assets that's help us to providing appropriate discount rate to use in dividend valuation models so in security market line that's called as SML to measure the relationship between the expected or required rate of return and systematic risk that's measured by beta for lo look for this graph we will understand we have expected rate of return and we have beta look for security market line we also in security market line we have risk free rate the investor will look for more than risk free rate to get more profit for that any point in security market line include the relationship between expected rate of return and beta and beta look for beta it's it's normal to be one if the more one that's mean there's increase in risk if the beta will be more than one that's mean there's more risk if the beta will be zero that's in this point include only risk free rate why if the beta zero will be a uh, uh, risk free rate because there is no volatility in expected rate of return there is no risk for that beta will be zero that's normal beta it's called as one if there is more than one that's mean there there is more risk if less than one that's mean there is little risk for that beta help us to understand how we can to measure the risk for the assets in the market so the expected rate of return for the risky assets is determined by risk free rate plus risk premium for any individual assets that's how we can to determine the expected rate of return by this equation we will start with risk free rate plus beta 
that will measure the systematic risk for the assets. Multiply risk premium. Sorry, plus risk premium. That's include risk market minus risk free ratio. We'll understand this equation by this example. If we need to determine the expected rate of return, we have five assets. We have beta to measure systematic risk. Then we need to calculate or estimate expected rate of return according to KABM. If we assume risk-free rate 5% and market return 9%, we have beta for 5 assets started from 70 to minus 30. If we will apply KABM to measure the expected rate of return by risk free rate plus beta multiply risk premium risk premium in this case include re retain market minus risk free rate if we will apply this equation we will write for the expected rate of return look for this graph we have systematic risk that's measured by beta and expected rate of return to understand again the relationship between expected rate of return and systematic risk that's called as security market line for that an investor who will look for any point more than or higher than security market line look for the c c include higher return with level of risk if the investor look for d that's mean higher risk with lower return for that the investor maybe he will prefer any point higher than security market to get more profit so in this class we explain capital asset surprising model that model help us to determine the expected rate of return we have many assumptions for capital as surprising model but main assumption for capital as surprising model there is no tax there is no inflation there is no interest rate and the investor target any point in the efficient volunteer also we understand capital market line that's major the relationship between expected rate of return and and standard deviation also we explain security market line in security market line we need to understand the relationship between expected rate of return and beta beta that major systematic risk so main idea in this class we need to understand how we can to determine the expected rate of return for risky assets thank you for your attention in this class and see you in next class